Hello, I'm Alan Fulton, Irrigation and Water Resources Farm Advisor with the University of California Cooperative Extension. I work in the northern Sacramento Valley of Tehama, Glen, Clusa, and Shasta counties. Welcome to this brief tutorial discussing how to adjust for different irrigation and wetting patterns. More and more, we see that microsprinkler irrigation or drip irrigation is being used in orchard production. It's uh, highly predominant throughout our industries. As a result, a common question that comes up is since I don't irrigate the entire orchard floor, do I need to apply more water to compensate? To begin to explore this question, let's think back to the basics of, of the crop evapotranspiration concept. The rate of crop evapotranspiration is not greatly affected by the wetted area because the applied water is primarily taken up by the crop and transpired out the canopy surface, which usually covers more area than the partially wetted pattern from your micro or drip irrigation system. The picture that I put together in, in this slide tries to portray this. We have the sun that is shining down on a prune orchard. It's, dry, it's providing the energy that drives the evapotranspiration of the water. Most of the water is coming out the, through the tree rows, the canopy, and less water is coming out the dry orchard middles. Furthermore, you can see that within the shaded area beneath the trees is a single line drip used to irrigate this orchard. So it's a very small fraction of the orchard that is actually being irrigated. Yet the crop of apotranspiration is still occurring from the entire orchard surface and mostly out the canopy of the trees. If anything, reducing the wetted area will reduce the rate of crop evapotranspiration by reducing the soil evaporation and slightly lessen the amount of applied water needed. So in my opinion, no, it's not necessary to apply more water to compensate for, smaller, for a smaller wetted pattern, but it is necessary to irrigate differently. Smaller wetted areas translate to lower water application rates. This translates to more hours of irrigation to apply equal amounts of water and that matches the same weekly ET as if you were using a solid set sprinkler or some other type of full coverage irrigation system. Consequently, it may be necessary to irrigate more often each week. The soil intake rates may cause runoff and the soil water holding capacity that may affect whether deep percolation occurs may also govern this. You'll also want to consider your time of use rates as a factor. To try to illustrate this point, let's do uh, a comparison in the next few slides. Let's first consider the water application rate of a full coverage solid set sprinkler irrigation system. So here I've used the screenshot from the water application rate calculator that's available on Sac Valley Orchard's uh, source website. I've inputted, described a solid set sprinkler system. I've inputted a flow rate for the sprinkler of 1.45 gallon per minute. That is gallons per minute, a higher flow sprinkler nozzle. Since it is solid set with higher flow, these sprinklers throw a, a longer pattern. And so quite often the sprinklers are set up every other tree, every other row. So in a walnut orchard with 90 trees per acre, there'd be 45 sprinklers per acre. When we work out the math using this calculator, we find that in one hour of operation for one acre, this solid set sprinkler will, will apply over 3,900 gallon per acre, which equates to a precipitation rate of about 0.14 or 1,400 inches per hour. Now for sake of comparison and contrast, we'll look at a micro sprinkler system that does not wet the entire orchard surface, maybe 60 to 75%, like shown in the previous picture. In this case, the micro sprinkler has a flow rate of 18 gallon per hour, 
there is one microsprinkler per tree. And since there are 90 trees per acre, there are 90 microsprinklers per acre. The applied water on a per hour basis is just over 1,600 gallon per acre. And when converted to a precipitation rate, this equals to about 0.06 inch per hour. So doing a little bit of math, we can make a comparison of how the two different irrigation systems, the full coverage versus a parcel coverage, has a different irrigation run time requirement each week. For the solid set sprinkler, we have, if we assume two inches of ET with our precipitation rate of 0.14 inch per hour, this equates to just over 14 hours per week of irrigation to return that equivalent ET to the orchard. This is easily accomplished in one irrigation per week in most orchard soils. In a few instances, the soils may have intake rates that might limit this a little bit, but probably not. Now in contrast, let's consider a, mic a micro sprinkler system that I described earlier. The pre precipitation rate is 0.06 inch per hour. That equates to 30, just over 33 hours per week to return that two inches of ET back to the orchard. This is a fairly long set for one application. One that could create runoff, might lead to some stand, unwanted standing water. So it may be necessary to split the irrigation, the weekly uh, irrigation need into two irrigations per week roughly 16 to 17 hours per week, uh, maybe three or four days apart. So this gives you a little bit of food for thought that when you are using drip or micro sprinkler systems that partially wet, it's not that you need to add more water, but you will need to irrigate differently. Typically, you're going to need to increase your operational hours to compensate for the lower water application rate. Thank you for participating in this tutorial.